Hello everyone, welcome back to another game development video. I hope you had a good weekend. I've been working very hard this Monday on redoing the whole first bike level. Um, I felt like uh, with the original one, it just wasn't working with the aesthetic because you could, when you jumped like into the forest or whatever, you would hit like a wall of air and I just felt like that was very, uh, I don't know, like it just didn't feel real, like I want to keep the immersion as real as possible. So what I'm doing, I'm probably showing the time lapse video right now, I am um, redoing all the walls around the trail and I'm making them taller to uh, keep the player in. but. I'm having walls there so then it actually like feels like if you go into the side of the trail you're actually hitting into something and so I'm gonna put trees on top of the uh, walls instead for the forest but um, I'm also I've also added like a nicer texture to the walls because like originally the walls are just like a flat green color and it looks pretty awful but uh, I've fully textured the walls and I think it looks really good. And I'm also adding a texture to the, the green like grassy area on top of the walls and uh, that'll happen tomorrow. Um, and also uh, tomorrow I'm gonna work on redoing the uh, texture for the trail itself because this current uh, texture is pretty awful. Um, and yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna model some more trees as well, some trees with the uh, longer trunks on the bottom with no le uh, leafage or like pine needles on the bottom uh, and then I can put those trees on the uh, on the actual trail itself and the reason for that would be um, if I had the trees with the needleage on the bottom on the trail I would need like a lot um, High quality, a lot more high quality uh, colliders on it. So my plan was just to put like a cylinder collider on the trunk of the taller trees and that would be a lot more efficient for putting trees on the trail. And then I can put the more detailed trees on the tops of these green areas uh, without colliders. So it'll be pretty efficient. And uh, I think there's like one patch of grass area that I'm gonna allow the, the player to uh, jump onto if he's clever enough. Um, and maybe I'll put like a secret or something there. But uh, other than that, I'm really digging the uh, new aesthetic I have going, and I think I'm going to stick with it for the rest of the trails. Um, and also for the river, uh, in terms of shaders, I'm planning on switching the project over to a lightweight render pipeline project, and what I can do with that is... Um, I can, uh, so with this current version of Unity I have open right now, I can't use the shader graph, and I don't know how to program shaders at all, so I kind of want to experiment with the, the shader graph, uh, and the only way I can do that is by switching to the lightweight render pipeline uh, project format. So it shouldn't be too hard of a transition, I just have to move some stuff over. But yeah, that's what I've been doing today, and uh, yeah, I'm going to keep at it. Uh, tomorrow, and I'll see you then. Hello again, we're back on this wonderful Tuesday, and I've just been working on the general aesthetic for the trail. Uh, I've moved to a uh, lightweight render pipeline project, so some of the atmosphere is a bit different from uh, how it looked before, but uh, other than that, I've just been uh, adding textures to the new model for the trail, and I think it looks really good. They're quite simple textures, but they do the job well. It really gives that kind of Nintendo aesthetic. Um, and I've also, since I've moved to Lightweight Render Pipeline, uh, I'm able to use Shader Graph, and so uh, I've been working on this uh, water texture for the river and I think it looks really good. It's a pretty simple shader. Basically, it just uses uh, Voronoi, and which is uh, 
this kind of like random generator and it's gone through some filters and then I've paired that with this uh, node thing which basically detects any intersections with the, the mesh and it uh, creates a white border so you can kind of see that right here and yeah I've also uh, made it time based so it moves as the game goes on and I think it looks really good um, and yeah uh, I'm gonna keep adding more details to it tomorrow like re-adding the trees and uh, making those taller trees that I was talking about yesterday and also I might be modeling some rocks but we'll see uh, how I'm feeling tomorrow how ambitious I'm feeling <laughs> but yeah uh, I'll see you then So today I've just been experimenting on how I can make my own custom skybox for the environment. So I started out uh, just uh, drawing the texture in GIMP. Um, uh, it didn't turn out very well, but this is just for like an experiment. So I have like uh, letters for top, bottom, uh, left, right, and front. Um, but uh, I realized that I couldn't really get the style I wanted if I just downloaded someone's uh, skybox so I had to make my own and uh, I wanted to figure out how I could do that in Blender and thankfully Blender has this special feature for the camera called panoramic and the Blender, Blender always comes in clutch with these kind of things so shout out to the Blender devs for making this an actual thing in Blender so basically what I mean is if you go in panoramic you can choose this special type called equa rectangular and that basically makes like a stretched out distorted image but it makes it in such a way that it will work properly with cube maps. Uh, so basically what I'm gonna do and this is just a test scene that I made uh, basically I'm gonna make the whole mountainous scene around the camera and then when I take the um, panoramic, when I render the panoramic video or uh, image, uh, I can show it on screen how it looks. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the result of that. And then basically from there, there's a website that I use. Um, it's off the, it's like an app off GitHub, and basically it takes the. Uh, panoramic image and splits it up into six different images and uh, basically you just plug those six images into uh, your skybox material and it just works like a charm so uh, obviously this doesn't look very good because it was just a quick thing that I threw together but it's a massive improvement over that hand-drawn one It's Thursday and today I've just been continuing to work on the skybox and um, I'm getting somewhere. Uh, there hasn't been really any guides or tutorials on how to make custom skyboxes in Blender for Unity. So I've just been doing a lot of experimenting on my own. And I might even make a tutorial of my own just because, I don't know, I couldn't find anything about it and it might help some people out. Um, but basically, uh, I've revamped all the terrain and I've added clouds and what I've found is uh, you want to keep the detail uh, past a certain radius. I tried adding some trees like closer to the camera and it just turned out looking kind of weird with uh, how the skybox behaves. So like if I had uh, rendered like a tree right here um, and I moved around the level that tree would stay the same size while these actual trees would change in size so it looked really uh, weird but um yeah so if you stay if you keep the detail past a certain radius from the camera <coughs> from the camera 
uh, it'll look pretty good. So, um, what I did was I made these uh, mountain models and I made a special shader that basically uh, puts snow and grass um, on the flattest areas of it and then the steeper areas uh, stay rocky. And then I've added these uh, nice fluffy clouds. Um, one problem I'm having though is the snow uh, is like really, I don't know, grainy I guess. And I haven't been able to figure out how to uh, like sharpen it up a bit, but uh, it's not too bad. And uh, another thing I need to do is like when I actually get the scene that I'm looking for, I need to <laughs> render at a higher resolution. So it's looking really grainy right now on here, and I need to up the sample count. Um, and I think you can also. Uh, there's like a special denoiser that they added in the Blender 2.8 that I could use to make it look sharper. But um, I'm gonna keep working on this uh, tomorrow as well, and I'll probably have a nice finished looking skybox uh, by the end of tomorrow. So uh, we'll see what happens. Hey, what's up? It's Friday, and I've just been figuring more stuff out about the skybox today, and uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it at this so far, because I want to keep working on other stuff. Um, I think it looks pretty good for now. There's gonna be other stuff, like, in between the level and the skybox to make it look uh, a bit better, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. Um, I figured out that using like the six-sided um, material wasn't as good as using a uh, cube map. Um, so what I did for that was I took the panoramic uh, picture and you don't need to like separate it into six pictures. You just have to set it to a cylindrical texture and it'll work for the uh, cube map shader and I think it looks a lot better. There's like a lot less loss of detail. Um, and yeah, I can now use this knowledge and make a lot more uh, skyboxes way quicker now instead of spending three days uh, trying to create one. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, and yeah, that's gonna be it for this week. I hope you have a good weekend. Take care. You've got mail.